For MSO New Sports, I'm Tim Kearns, and this is the Thanksgiving edition of Panther Preview with Beverly Head Coach Jeff Hutton. Jeff, uh, it's it's been a week and a half since you last played a game. You're getting ready for Thursday's tilt against the against the Salem Witches. Uh, how do you feel that that, that ten day period after the game uh, against Chelmsford, getting ready for Thursday's tilt? Well, we gave the kids a couple of days off. Um, and, and that's something that I've always done, and, and, and we did back when, when Dan Bauer was a head coach here too. Gives us time to, to really get the preparation for the week. Plus, Salem is its own season anyway. So it's almost like a restart. You hit the reset button. You come back with a different purpose because it is different. It, it's, it's, everything about it is different. You know, it's the longest prep time other than the preseason. You know, there's all the... Uh, the outside stuff, the hoopla that surrounds the game. So you, you just try your best to, to really keep the kids as focused as much as you possibly can, um, sharpen them up as much as you can, add some wrinkles here and there on offense and defense, and just keep them mentally ready for the game. Have you done the uh, meeting at the bridge? Yeah, we did the uh, build, bridging the gap. Or we did it at Winter Island yesterday. Today was the rotary luncheon at the uh, Danversport Yacht Club. So... All of that stuff. Then we got the pep rally tomorrow. So we're, we're we're almost we're this close. You know, I told the kids you get two sleeps until our last game. So we're we're getting there. That is truly one of the <clears throat> greatest traditions beyond the game itself. I think of, of, of any high schools in the Commonwealth. Oh yeah, like, like over in Manchester, we didn't have those things that were about or for the game or happened because of the game. You know, and I, I mentioned at the. Uh, the bridge and the gap, you know, the fact that a football game became the catalyst for change, you know, the the vandalism, the fights, the whatever, the bad behavior between the two communities because of a football game, you know, and, and then it also became the reason for change. So uh, that's how special that this game is. You know, it, it, it certainly talks to the uh, uh, what can come out of a, a positive action. And uh, the uh, the quick, I mean, not the quick thinking, but 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 certainly the, the thought process of those behind that day. Oh, sure. It's uh, again, it's one of the oldest uh, ones in the state, oldest ones in the country. You know, Thanksgiving Day rivals, and it is special. And that's when you try to to, to to impart that on the kids. You know, we've had a few, a few former coaches come back and speak to the kids. We had uh, Coach Dave Wilbur, who coached on both sides of the rivalry. Uh, we had Coach Dan Bauer come back yesterday. We had Coach Roger Rosinski just to explain to them like a little bit of the history and, and really what it means to both communities. That was quite a line of individuals you had uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. come before the kids. And if they, did, if they weren't a little uh, mesmerized by, by those guys standing there and, and how much uh, tradition is involved and success involved with uh, each of those coaches. And then you go to the wall in the field house mm-hmm. And there they are. I know. And that's what you try to tell these kids. And I try to tell them every day when I mention this. You guys don't know how lucky you really are. That you've had guys that have not, not just great like football coaches, but great teachers, great people um, that have been a part of Beverly football. And just to come back and, and speak to you, they thought it was more of an honor that they got to come back than the kids probably realized you know, like th- that they can give back now that they're done with it. Okay, let's let, let's get to the game itself. It's, we were talking earlier, it's going to be a little chilly tonight, certainly, but game day, it's going to be their forecasting in the mid-50s. Yeah, we'll take it. We'll take it. We had a practice Saturday, and Saturday was a nice day, too, uh, and it warmed up really fast, so all the kids that had the, the sweatshirts and the hoodies underneath their pads about halfway through were, were stripping their clothes <laughs> off, So, and I said, guys, this is kind of what it's going to be like on Thursday, so dress accordingly. And never mind the fact that your adrenaline is going to be pumping ten times more than it was on any other day. So factor that in as well. What do you do in terms of game prep for this particular game uh, as opposed to maybe other games during the season? I think you just kind of have to really temper it a little bit. You know, we got to simmer it, you know, like when you're cooking so you don't go out of the gates too soon because, you know, all that excitement and that nervous energy is wasted energy. So 
you do our best to, to make sure they read their keys, and that just comes with every football practice anyway. But it's just, then the other part is you, you got you to gotta enjoy it as well. And that's one thing that every speaker, and, and even at the Bridge in the Gap, and today at the Danversport Yacht Club, you know, Mayor Cahill was like, take a second, you know, soak it all in, stop, and just look at all the fans, all the families, the game, the competition across the field, your coaches, you know, it means something, enjoy it, so you can remember it. Yeah, for many of these kids, it's, it's like the seniors, it's their last game. This is it. And uh, they won't be playing football in college, uh, and yet it'll be probably the biggest crowd they will ever play in front of, because we, we know historically on both sides, people show up for this one, mm-hmm. they'll be lining the hill, they'll be filling the stands on the far side, they'll be down along the, the, the field at the fence, mm-hmm. three or four deep, it's just an amazing experience uh, for... Family, friends, alumni. Mm-hmm. It's, it's the biggest alumni gathering. Oh, yeah. Probably, you know, of, of any that happens throughout the year. Mm-hmm. No, we're, we're lucky that we live in, a, in an area of the country that still has Thanksgiving Day football. You know, I grew up in New Jersey, and we played on Thanksgiving. And to be able to come here, and that's still a tradition up here, it's really great. And we joke, you know, Dan Bauer, when he was a head coach, he jokingly said, but it's not a joke, and you can attest to it, that... Yay, congratulations, you won a Super Bowl. But did you beat Salem on Thanksgiving? You know, they that means more to a lot lot more to a lot of people in the in the town and the alum than going down to Gillette and winning the Super Bowl. You know, and all you get into is go back to the two thousand ten season. Yeah. Beverly started out very poorly. Yep. Then got hot. When they got into the in, into the league, they ran mm-hmm. the table, they won the playoffs, they won the Super Bowl, but they lost to Salem. Still that one, ask any you of those know. guys on that team, and they'll say that's their one regret, that they kind of slept through that game and didn't didn't respect the magnitude of it. Yeah, and and, it, and it's, it's like you said, yeah, we won the Super Bowl in 2010. Yeah, but didn't you lose to Salem? Uh-huh. And it's like, oh, yeah, you got yep. to and like, you gotta bring that up. That's right. You know, so it, 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 it does stay with you, and it's, it's a source of... Uh, Conversation. Uh-huh. Let, let let's say years later, as guys get together oh, yeah. and 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 see their former mm-hmm. uh, foes in many different social settings. Oh yeah, it's a point of pride, you know. Okay, uh, so nothing really special in the game plan. You, you you've got the plays, you've got the defenses. It's more or less just basically, as you said, sharpening everybody's attention to it, mm-hmm. bringing, the, bringing the mental focus probably more important than anything else uh, to, a, to a crescendo for these guys. Oh, yeah. Well, you hope that they're excited anyway. You know, if you, and, and as always, if you're teaching excitement, then you got a lot of other problems, you know. Um, so I, I, we're not going to have to worry about that. It's really the execution part. Who's going to execute better? Because both sides are going to come. You know, it's, it's, it's our Super Bowl, and it's their Super Bowl too. Yeah. And they've had a really good team this year. You know, they're six and four. Uh, they played a lot of tough teams, like we did, really tight. So, and, and you know, Coach Rosinski said it best: like, doesn't matter what the records are, throw it out. Yeah. It's you're zero and zero, they're zero and zero, and it all matters the next forty eight minutes. Yeah, and what it does is okay. At the end of the <clears throat> end of the day, what does the record between Beverly and Salem stand at? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, that's that's the case. Listen, Coach, I want to thank you for all of your uh, cooperation and help during the course of the season, meeting with me on a on a on a weekly basis to do the continue the Panther preview uh, that that we started on under Dan mm-hmm. and continue through um, through Andrew. It's it's a lot of fun for for myself, uh, and uh, it, it keeps people in the area up to date on just. What's going on with with Panther football? We will meet one more time, uh, beginning of next week, to do the, a Panther review to look at the Thanksgiving Day game and look at some of the highs and lows of this season. Excellent, thanks, Tim. Okay, thanks, Coach.